Hey guys, uh, hope, hope you guys are having a happy Labor Day. And uh, if you're tuning into this in the future, this is a replay of a live stream. So it's gonna be a little bit, you know, more unorganized than my standard videos. Uh, but just bear with me. Uh, we're gonna do something a little different on this video. But I'm gonna wait a little bit for uh, some people to join. And then we'll take a look at this uh, remote solar battery charger we got here. All right, I see we have a few people joining. Happy uh, Labor Day, guys. Uh, I hope you're getting some rest on this Labor Day. I'm actually laboring on this Labor Day, uh, doing a few different things, but one of the things that I uh, have become bombarded with the last few weeks, let me get a little closer to the camera where you can hear me talk, uh, hopefully with the traffic, is um, I get a lot of requests to do product reviews, and most of them are uh, smaller, inexpensive uh, products that, um, you know, are just kind of things that may be useful around the shop. Uh, some of them uh, maybe don't warrant a full build video on. They just need to be shown and shown how to use. They're kind of basic. There's not really a lot to show about them. But um, this is one I've been working with, uh, with a lady named Bonnie on this one for quite a while. And I needed to get this into a video. So I thought it'd be good to do it on a live stream and just show a little bit about it. And in the interest of full disclosure, I am not getting paid to do this video. I am, if you purchase one of these, which if you decide to purchase one, I'll have a link in the description of the video after the video is over. If you purchase one, I'll make nothing on it. You know, so I'm not trying to get you to buy this. I'm not trying to, you know, push this in any way. It, I do think it's uh, probably a useful tool if you are in an environment where you need to jump something off or charge something up in an area where you don't have access to a, a normal you know outlet to plug in a battery charger and i actually have that situation i'll show you what that is uh coming up here in a minute but um anyway so uh let me just see how many people have joined I see we have a few people on. Hey, Mike, happy Labor Day to you. Volume down on it. So uh, for those that are just joining, I, I got sent this um, battery charger quite a while back and I needed to do a, a, a review on it and just kind of show a little bit about it. So. That is, uh, that's what we're gonna do here this morning. And uh, I'm gonna show a little uses uh, for it. Uh, hey JC, how's it going? So again, if you're watching this in the future, this is a replay of a live stream. So you're gonna see me, you know, kind of talking to people joining in. Uh, hey George. Um, excellent, we, we've got somebody from a local iron workers union here in Dallas Fort Worth area, so. Uh, good to see you there, George. Um, anyway, so I'm going to, uh, again, I got sent this. This is from Mohu. Um, obviously, it's going to be something imported from China, I'm, I'm assuming. But um, let me show you. I've got it up on the screen here. If you guys decide to get one of these. You know, here's what you're looking at. I don't know if the, hopefully this is showing up good. But. You know, it's a $50 item. It's a 30 watt um, <clears throat> solar panel, and it doesn't say in the in the specifications, but I'm assuming it is 12 volt DC. But you know, suitable for car batteries, cars, RV boats, ship, aircraft, craft, satellite, space stations, outdoor breeding, you know, things like that.
So one of the ways that, that I really could use it out here is, uh, is with my trailer and the, uh, <clears throat> I'll just show you here real quick. Uh, you gotta see my car trailer here and I've got a winch on it and a battery box for it that uh, my friend Jeremy Meacham, Meach 13, about 10 years ago built this battery box out of some angle iron uh, and it's, it's held up well. But, um, you know, you see we've got 12 volt hookups here, you know, for a battery to run, run the winch on. <clears throat> well, I don't use that very much, you know, just everywhere once in a while. And you can see where it is now in relation to my shop. It's, I don't know, 50 feet away or so. And, but where I normally keep it is out here at the barn. And uh, you guys, um, let me show you this. <clears throat> And I don't have any power out here at the barn. And I think this is a good use for it in a, you know, in a rural setting or in a farm setting. I was thinking about my friend, um, Rudy, that I borrow his tractor from occasionally. And he's got his tractor stored remotely. And sometimes he goes a couple of weeks without using it. And one time I went out there to get it and it was, the battery was really sluggish on it, you know, not wanting to start. So um, I keep the batteries and the battery chargers in here you can see the battery right there and this is junky out here guys two batteries right there and my battery charger is right here but i don't have any power out here so when i get ready to use it <clears throat> i've got to drag those batteries into the shop and the charger into the shop um and charge them up so The uh, more handy thing to do would be, you know, like the day before I need to go use it, is to bring out my handy dandy Mohu battery charger and, uh, and charge it. So I don't have to drag anything out there or drag the batteries in or any of that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, let's take a look at it. You can see, uh, I think you can see here, this is the box that it comes in. And you don't get any documentation in it, or at least I didn't get documentation with this one. But I don't really think you need it. I mean, it's not a lot, it's not a lot to figure out on it. You got, you know, your positive and your negative, and you got your uh, solar panel with it. And you have some specifications on the back of it. 30 watt you know it's yeah I don't I don't fully understand that but anyway we're gonna um, we're gonna take this and uh, let's take it around I got the the hood popped on my truck here because it just so happens that the battery is in the Sun now the one the one caveat about this that you need is uh, you gotta you gotta have access to sunlight so and if you don't have that you know you're gonna have some difficulty but um let's see I'm just gonna lay this down here temporarily and we'll hook the red up to the red and the black up to the black actually I'm not gonna hook the black up I just wanted to get that uh, hooked up there a little bit let me move this around here where you can probably see it better and uh, let me see if I can see what you guys are seeing yeah you can see that and I'm gonna go get my voltmeter so bear with me for a minute
should have had this arranged before I got here and started this. I can't find my voltmeter. I know I was using it out back uh, doing stuff on the fuse box. Um, so let me let me see if I can locate it here, guys. Well, this kind of sucks. I don't know what I did with my voltmeter. I was out here the other day um, going through some stuff and I ended up hooking up that light that I'd had for a long time and I'd never uh, mounted it. And I came across it and decided to hook it up and I was using my voltmeter to, to see whether those wires were hot or not. And I don't know if I, I might've laid it up on top of the building. Let me grab a ladder and see if I can get it from there. All right, I found it. And you guys are gonna have to apologize for me here, or for my voltmeter. This thing is, uh, I've, I've had this for probably about maybe 20 years or more. And it just works, it just keeps on working and I've never bought anything nicer or better. It's a Radio Shack, a uh, little small multimeter. But um, anyway, I wanted to, to check here and um, let's see. So we have it on, on uh, volt DC, and um, I need an extra hand, so let's do it this way. I'm gonna clamp this one down with this, and then touch it there. All right, so at rest, I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, we got nine, nine and a half volts without our solar, solar panel uh, connected to it. So now let's let's connect our solar panel and get it in the sun here. And I know this thing had a plastic cover on it, so let's pull that off. And again, if you're just joining, uh, I am testing out this uh, remote solar powered uh, battery charger. And uh, I did get this for free. They sent it to me for free to show it on a video, but I'm not making any money. If you buy one, I don't make a dime. They didn't send me any cash. 
So, you know, I really ha don't have any incentive for you to buy this. Uh, the only incentive I have is just to show it. And if it's of interest to you, there'll be a link in the description of the video once this goes, uh, once this goes live. So you saw we had nine and a half volts there uh, without it connected to it. So let's see if we get anything uh, going into it. All right, I was just looking at the comments there, guys. I know, uh, again, if you're watching this on the replay, just bear with me on the pauses and the delays. I'm doing this real time. I've got no ability to edit. You know, it's just gonna be a live video and uh, we're doing the best we can with it. So uh, I was just looking at the comments. JC Smith said that the nine and a half volts uh, doesn't seem right. I agree with that. Normally at rest on, a, on an uncharged battery, you'll see 11 volts or something like that. So let me, let me just double check it again. I'm gonna, um, well, let me check it with it connected. So we, we saw what it was there with it disconnected. Now let me check it with it connected. So you see we got 12 volts there on it. And I don't know if that's showing up in the camera or not. Um, this is the closest I can get your camera, get you in here a little bit closer to it. So, um, and I'm going to disconnect it and we'll see what it is. So you see it's kind of moving around there a little bit depending on where I touch it at. It first showed 12 volts and um, it's it's around that, around getting up there close to 12 volts. Let me let me just turn this down where the sun's not on it and see if that makes any difference in it. Now it may have captured some, you know, stored energy in the in the cell, you know, and it still got enough juice to to uh, Put some power into it i don't know uh, let me let me set it back up and let me disconnect it so let me disconnect the negative now we'll leave it off of there for a second i'm trying to get this where you can see it too yeah it's it's showing 12 and You know a little over 12 volts we'll let it kind of sit there for a minute so i must not have had it uh connected up just right a second ago so it's really moving around a lot just at rest let me let me connect it back up and again there's no there's no instructions on this so i don't know if this is a deal where you know you really have to you know connect this up and let it run for you know it's on a slow charge which i would assume it would be um but let me uh let me just connect it here and see if it does anything while while i have the charger on it so i'm looking at it it's 12.3 uh volts right as it is and when i connect that to it it's uh it doesn't seem to be uh doing anything let me uh let me check the back of it let me uh and see if there's any kind of switch or anything on this. I don't really see anything. So without having any instructions, I, I would only assume that this is a trickle charger, you know, and you have to leave it, you have to leave it charged up for, for quite a while. Um, so let me just connect it back again and see what we, see what we get here let me get the negative one uh, so it's up a little higher 
you know but again it's it's that's the highest i've seen it so far so maybe we just need to let it sit here for a little bit and uh you know see if we can get it up to 13 volts or something like that maybe 15 minutes of of having the sun on it and the charger connected to it let me disconnect it again just to look at it and see yeah it, just instantly disconnecting it and connecting it you don't really see a difference in it there so let's just uh i'm gonna leave it on right there and uh i'll just leave my voltmeter here and um so let me go around here uh, let me put you on back on the, on the camera and we'll go back and i'll look at some of the comments and respond to what you guys are saying Yeah, um, old school is saying that'd be a handy thing to to keep things on charge in the barn. I don't know if you joined, but um, my trailer, which is right here, I normally keep it out out at the barn, and the uh, you know is something I could use it for, and I will use it for, is um, is for when um, I need to charge the battery for the winch because I rarely use it. I use it a few times a year, even when I go get steel, which is pretty often. I don't need the winch for that you know they load it with a forklift and i unload it here with the gantry crane um but occasionally i'll need to use the, the winch on it um i used it a while back when i had to get a a a car for somebody um that matt hooked me up on a deal with let's see okay so Mike Wilson is saying that uh, they've got one on their RV and it won't start to charge until it warms up about 20 minutes into full sun, gradually increasing to 12.75. So I've got it in the dedicated, you know, it's in the direct sun. I mean, we've got a nice uh, sun this morning. There's no clouds in the sky. So we'll let it, we'll let it go for a little bit. Now we'll just chat here for 15 or 20 minutes and see if we can get it, uh, see if we can get it going. Uh, the wattage on it, let me see. Oh, it was a 30 watt. That's what it was. So let me go back to look at the comments there. So J.C. Smith saying something about, um, well, J.C. Smith, I, I'm assuming it is. It said it was for, you know, cars, trucks, boats, RVs, um, you know, and it, but it, it says uh, like 1.2 volts to 18 volts. So I don't know if it, if it, you know, senses your voltage or, you know, exactly how it, um, you know, how it knows to charge, you know, at, at what voltage I. I don't know we're about to find out i may mess up my truck by doing this for something that's not really gaining me anything just trying to help some people out here um but you know that's what it's about we'll we'll figure it out here let me look at the time i got 9 56 central time where i am and um so we'll come back in about uh at about 10 after and go up there and look at it again so um I'll show you guys uh, real quick. I said I wasn't going to do this, but honestly, uh, the guys over at Fab Nation where I'm supposed to be posting my videos, you know, the lead guy over there, I can harass him because, you know, that's the kind of that's the kind of relationship that we have. You know, he's supposed to be getting this site ready for me to post content. He's asked me to make specific content for that site, and he's yet to get it ready. Well, it is kind of ready, but he's making some final tweaks on it but i thought i'd just show you guys the uh 
the paint booth here. Um, you can see we got the exhaust fan mounted. Um, the door, the door right here against the wall is going to go in this opening right here. And then our intake filters will go on the back wall. You can see the middle section. I don't know if you, you probably can't pick it up. The middle section studs are, there's four across the middle that are 21 inches apart and that's the exact dimension needed to fit the filters in. So, and I've made some uh, brackets to hold the filters in that screw into the studs. But um, anyway, and I, I got enough uh, wiring supplies to get start doing the wiring on it. But I've I've been in a little bit of a standstill. I needed to stop and make a bunch of stuff to to make some money here for the shop because it's just been slow. And um, I had a couple of orders come in for some metal art, you know, hundred bucks, two hundred bucks kind of thing, which are which are you know helpful for me. Um, so I got those made and painted in the shop and I did those Alabama flags you guys may have saw the uh, the videos on that um, and I don't know why those the video on that's actually a pretty good uh, metal art video uh, where I painted the uh, the flags inside the shop in there but it's getting really low low views I don't know why but um, anyway that's what we're looking at that's where we're at right now and what I'm waiting on is um the roof panels the pl the local now i had two options i don't know if you guys have mueller in your part of the country but um mueller is a metal building supply place they sell all the r panels they sell the purlins uh they sell all the trim you know they make it all you know at, at their facilities and I could probably get it at Mueller. It would be a little more expensive. I try to work with our local steel yard when I can. Uh, one, to support them, and two, to um, uh, save a little bit of money. So I had ordered the roof panels for this, um, and I was gonna get those on and do a little bit of notching to fit the, where it fits up at the R panels there. Um, and I ordered them the about three days before Harvey hit Houston and what I didn't realize is that they they stock the panels in in standard sizes you know in two foot increments so if you need you know 10 12 14 16 footers 18 footers they've got all that but if you needed something custom um, they can get them but they they come from Houston well guess what the no there's no no way to get things in and out of Houston right now so I, it's been a couple weeks now since I ordered that and I'm gonna call them tomorrow when they open back up and see if there's any update on it and if there's not I'll probably go ahead and um, get ones from Mueller and then go ahead and place the order for the external panels as well and then what I'm gonna do is uh, on the inside I'm gonna get some white plastic sheeting and if anybody's got a good source for that if anybody's got a good source for white plastic sheeting, let me know. But I'm going to do the whole inside of it in white plastic sheeting. And that'll be my interior for a while because uh, I'm trying to just get, get it up and going and running with, with the you know least expensive route possible. And um, so the uh, that seems to be the best way to go. I'll have the outside of it done, the roof on it the wiring done lighting in it and white plastic sheeting on the inside and then you know I can just put an insulation behind the white plastic sheeting and then I can just put my either OSB or half inch plywood uh, so I can get smooth walls so they're just easier to clean and they collect less overspray and I can use a you know a gloss type finish on the walls to just you know let things uh, not collect in there as much but Anyway, uh, I'll show you inside the shop real quick while we're waiting for this thing to maybe charge up. You can see that bright sunshine out here now. I see Ray on there. I see a few other guys. Jerry, what's up, fellas? I see uh, Rich Satajet883. Um, I'll show you inside the shop. You guys saw the video the other day. It's kind of messy. I really hate it, but you see those flags I painted and then this one 
thing for the brewery. Maybe I can show you a quick close up. I got to redo a couple of things here. Um, I had uh, some poor masking techniques and I got some bleed throughs in a couple of areas. So on this one, I got to read, I'm going to mask off the red and, and respray the white. This one is good to go. It, it turned out really nice. And then this one, I kind of got the same thing. There was a pretty major bleed through right here and I tried to wipe it with some acetone and it wiped it down to the, you know, wipe the base off of it. So um, I'll have to redo. I may just get away with just redoing this stripe and that stripe. The others look, you know, good enough, um, you know, for what we're trying to do here. But overall, you know, given that I did this inside the paint booth, yeah, see, I got a bad connection. Let me step back outside. Overall, given that I did that inside the paint booth, it's really not, um, you know, it's not terrible. Very bad connection. Hopefully you guys are seeing me now. Somebody leave, post a comment and let me know if you can still see me. Okay, uh, so it looks like you guys can still see me there. So let's go. Uh, let's go around to. Um, yeah, Rich says wire it up and fire it up. Yeah, that's a good saying, and that's definitely what's going to happen. Um, hopefully, in another week or so, I'll have uh, you know the paint booth ready to go where I can paint in there, even though it's not going to be perfect. It'll be better than painting in the shop. What I was going to say about the finish um, on the stuff I painted in the shop is. Um, you know, I got very little trash in there. In fact, less trash in my shop than I was getting in the paint booth uh, that I was renting at the body shop because you guys may have seen that thing. It was it was really dirty, and um, so when you when you have a lot of dirt in the air and in the environment, and then you fire up a really big fan, well, all you're really doing is getting that stuff airborne. Now you're removing the overspray out of the environment but you're pulling in a lot of dirt and contaminants and that pulls it right into the paint so what i got in my shop in there you know was i just used this little let me show you real quick i just stuck this little fan in this door here and opened the door you know and it didn't really pull a lot of you know overspray out very quickly but i think over time it evacuated the the you know stuff out of the out of the shop but the uh the good thing is there's almost no trash in the paint the bad thing is because that overspray just sort of went airborne and hovered above the you know the the finish i think when that stuff settles down on top of you know wet clear and rich satajet may can uh comment on this that you you end up getting a light little haze on top of your clear that you know diminishes the gloss a tiny tiny bit now they still look super glossy and they look really good but um but i'd be interested if rich is watching this or any of the other painters out there if they've got a, a comment on that so let me check here on the time see where, how long we've been All right, we need to go about another five minutes and uh you know and then we'll check it but um let's see uh cannon builder just asked what do i seal the metal with before before i paint um the uh it depends on what it is i'm doing the the what i did on those flags the ones that had the white in it is i sprayed the whole flag with epoxy primer uh with white epoxy primer to to seal the bare metal and um, if you're not an automotive painter, well, that's that's a two-part catalyzed uh, direct-to-metal primer <clears throat> that you need to have a certain uh, scratch depth in the metal to get it to bond to. And then you have a recoat window, a window of time after that that you can spray right on top of it without sanding it 
for the one I use, it's three days. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. Um, the mistake I made is I sprayed the next day on it. And what happened was where my tape, where I needed to mask off, you know, the good thing about the epoxy primer is it's sticky. Stuff sticks to it, right? When you spray more paint on top of it, it really bonds to it. Well, when you stick tape to it, it bonds to it as well. So I had a little bit of the glue come off, even though I was using 3M tape um in some areas and it just you know i need to probably wait two days and on, on that epoxy and let it uh let it really uh, you know cure a little bit more and use a tape and not really press the tape in so much but if i don't press the tape in you know i can get blow throughs underneath so it's kind of a double-edged sword but where i go right over bare metal with clear so that you see the metal swirls and all that or the candy I use bully, uh, Bulldog Adhesion Promoter, and it's a clear uh, lacquer-based single part uh, product that's pretty inexpensive. You can get it in a spray can or you can spray it out of a gun. Um, and it's got its pros and cons as well. It, it has a tint to it. It, it. You know, once you put it on there, it changes the look of the metal. Even though it is generally clear, it does tint the metal a little bit. But from an adhesion standpoint, I've never had any problems with that. I've never, anything I've made, I've had a couple things I've had to go back and grind, you know, uh, remove the clear off of it because I messed something up. And it was on there. I mean, there was no flaking or, uh, you know, possibility of delamination. Now, is that something over time, you know, five years down the road? I don't know. You know, I, I haven't, you know, looked at it enough to know that. But let's take a look and see what we got here. We should be... We should have had enough time and see if we get this warmed up enough to be charging. Oh yeah. So we're up over 13 volts there now. Um, let me bring you in a little closer where you can see it. So hopefully you can see that. I'll move it around. I, I can't see the the screen because of the sun to see what you're seeing but hopefully you can see that you know we we got that up around 13 volts there now and uh, when we first hooked it up we had around 12. let me just disconnect it that'll that'll be a good test to see what we got when we disconnect it it dropped down a little bit so i would say that this thing is working as designed you know in terms of long term you know how long does it would it take to charge up a dead battery you know how long would it take to get a battery that needs a charge that hasn't been charged you know i don't know i think it's probably something that you would need to mess with but if you're interested in something like this on the replay i'm going to go back and edit the video and i will put a link in the description of it where you can purchase this and again just as full disclosure i'm doing it to help these guys out i'm making no money off of this they've sent me this for free i think i can get some good use of it around here so i do appreciate them doing that um it's a 50 dollars item so you can tell i'm not you know heavily incented to get you guys to buy this if you want it go buy it if you don't hey it's no skin off my back i could care less um but i do thank bonnie and the folks at mohu for sending it to me and uh, hopefully this video will meet their needs so let me go look at the comments. That'll conclude this part of the live stream here, the product review part. And I'll just go back through the comments and see if uh, you guys had any questions or any other useful information that that's um, you know that we could talk about here before we end this. <clears throat> Let's see. So we got lots of comments streaming through. If I could uh, get you guys to do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button, I'd appreciate that. That that really helps me. I see Fireman164 chiming in. Uh, we got Old School on there. Jack Connors, haven't seen him in quite a while. Um, yeah, Cannon Builder for, 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 for Bear Steel. Um, there, there is a clear epoxy. Here's the thing, anything that goes over the bare steel, um, 
that helps with adhesion is going to tint it. There's just, there's just no way around it. All of the products, including the clear coat, when you put clear coat, if you just went directly over bare steel with, with clear coat, it's got a tint to it. If you put, you pour up, mix up your clear coat, some of them have a yellowish tint. I've seen some that sort of have a bluish, you know, look. They all have, have a little bit of tint. The, the one thing that I would say that leaves the most bright finish, um, let me go get it real quick and I'll, I'll, I would bring you with me, but my, you know, I can't go inside the shop. Uh, you, you'll, I'll lose the signal, but it'll take me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, uh, this is this is what you're gonna want if you if you just want something that you can wipe onto bare metal. Um, now I don't know if this has UV protection. I don't know if you can top coat over the top of it with a clear coat. But what I do know is that if you take bare metal and you clean it really good and you have nice bright shiny metal, there is no rust, you know, uh, imperfections or anything left on it, and you clean it about five times until there is no, you know, until the rag, you can wipe it and there's nothing coming off on the rag. And you just wipe a coat of this on it. And I think you can wait about 15 minutes and put another coat. I've only ever used just one coat. Um, everything I've done this in has worked out well. And I've never put anything that I've coated with this back outside into the sun, but inside, you know, uh, it has, has held up well. So I don't know if, uh, you know, if that's something you're interested in, um, you can Google this. It's shark hide metal protectant. I think you can get it on Amazon and eBay and uh, different different coating store places uh, sell that. So, uh, Cannon Builder, hopefully that helps you out there. All right, guys, uh, we've been going for quite a while. Um, 42 minutes uh, I've somehow found a way to take a video that should be about 10 minutes about a solar panel and turned it into 40 minutes I, I really don't know how that kind of stuff happens but it seems to be a common theme with me and uh, you know just lack of lack of organization but you guys got any questions here on the live stream or comments or um, and thank you guys for uh, hitting the thumbs up Ray I see Rooster on there and Fireman and Tom Noble, Jack Connors, Old School, Mike Wilson. I know there's probably a lot of other guys. Wave Action 777. Uh, he leaves me a lot of comments. Tech 413. I see Retro Well joined us a little while back. I think JC Smith was on and left. He's been a real active participant in the live streams, JC Smith. I know he's got his own YouTube channel. I've yet to check him out. I need to. Uh, Mike, Mike Holson. I see Jerry on there. Any other comments, questions? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it. Hope you guys have an excellent Labor Day. And uh, if you uh, want to see the, uh, you know, the link to the uh, solar panel thing, just check the description. And if you want to buy it, go buy it. If you don't, you know, then don't. Don't leave me any, comp you know, complaints about it later on if you're watching this on the replay. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. And thanks to Bonnie from Mohu for sending me the, uh, the solar panel. See you guys.